Raging wildfires continue to spread across parts of Nova Scotia, leaving many displaced residents wondering when they can return home. And that also includes Caroline Parker. She is a morning show co-host at Jack FM 92.9 in Halifax. She's joining us live now this morning from Halifax. Good morning, Caroline. Hi, Tammy. How are you? I'm good. The question is, how are you doing? You're still displaced this hour. Uh, this has been quite the week. Tell us how you've been coping and the fact that you're still working, like you're still managing to try to juggle everything. Uh, it's been so emotional. Um, the fire started uh, right by my house. And uh, we're, of course, been evacuated and uh, staying in a hotel right now. But um, it, emotional is the only word I can say because the last we heard, our house is still standing, but our neighbors lost their homes, our best friends lost their homes. And it's just, I haven't slept since Sunday, but I knew I had to get up and go to work and I had to share my story with our listeners here in Halifax. I knew I had to distract myself. Otherwise, that was on you know, social media all the time, looking and reading to see what was happening. So I had to go to work. I had to distract myself. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite the week. I'm so sorry that you have to go through this, Carolyn. And knowing that you are one of uh, tens of thousands of people who are now away from home and wondering what is happening in their neighborhood and what they're going to be coming back to. Are you getting, Caroline, any information? I know you mentioned your neighbors' homes, your best friends' homes, but are you getting regular information on what is standing when it comes to your house? Um, not uh, really. I mean, they can't quite give us all the information. The fire is still burning in our neighborhood. They said today it's 50% contained, but the other 50% it's still out of control. Uh, so you can't get in, but um, we have good friends that are RCMP officers and uh, firefighters who have personally called us to say our house is still standing, but you know, just a few doors down, our neighbor's house is gone. Um, so we're not getting regular updates. But I mean, the fire officials, they're they are in there trying to do their best to cont contain this and control this, and they're doing the, the work they can. Uh, but I have to tell you that uh, some of the people that lost their homes uh, got emails last night, and they're gonna be taken in on a bus today so they can see the property where their house used to stand. Um, so they're gonna go in today, and I have to say, I have never been so relieved not getting an email last night. <laughs> So that means my house is still standing. Okay, can you walk us through, Caroline, the the moment when you were told that you have to leave and how that evacuation process uh, played out? Well, my family does this crazy thing. We go and jump in the water, the ocean, every month. We do it once, even when it's minus 20 outside. And a, a bunch of families were getting together. We were leaving to go to the beach. And we heard a fire truck and we saw it go by. Uh, we got into our car, and as we left, we were, we were about two kilometers into the uh, subdivision. We, s we could smell smoke, and then eight fire trucks passed us. And I said to my husband, turn around, turn around, something's wrong, this is serious. By the time we got to the end where we can actually do a U-turn, police already had the road blocked. So we were in our bathing suits, nothing else. We were out of our house and have been uh, since Sunday afternoon. And the only thing that I was worried about is I still had a cat back in the house. So I called the neighbor and said, we're being evacuated. You need to go in and get my cat. So luckily she got into my house, got the cat, but we left nothing, with just the clothes on our backs. With the bathing suits on your backs, that's all you had. So it, it, really, it unfolded that quickly that you just left the house yeah. and you weren't even able to U-turn and go back in. Listen, Tammy, our good friends. My, my friend was on the top floor of her home and she wrote on Facebook on our community page, hey, I see smoke, what's happening? Someone wrote, I think it's a brush fire. She went downstairs, she was cleaning the kitchen, looked out the window and there were the flames in her backyard. She rounded up two kids, uh, the two dogs, a cat hopped in the car and as they're pulling out of their driveway or as she was getting in the car, an ember fell on her head, burned her hair. And as she was pulling out of the driveway, her shed was already on fire and they lost everything. Like that's how fast it went. We were, she was like a half a kilometer from where that fire started. 
and within like 20 minutes, half an hour, it already engulfed homes and, you know, much of the forest. What would you want to say, Caroline, to, to the other people who are in the same situation? You right now are sharing your story just so that the rest of the country knows exactly what is going on. And you're kind of you're giving us an inside look at the, just the horrible feeling of knowing that you have to leave everything behind and you have no idea not only what's going to be left for you, but when you're going to be able to get back there. What would you want to say to the other folks who uh, right now are in a similar or the same position and are just trying to continue and carry on? Stay strong. There, uh, there's a lot of help out there. Um, we've been offered help from everyone around the world has been calling and texting and we will still, we will stick together. You know, we had a tragedy years ago, the mass shooting here in our province. We've all gone through this pandemic. Nova Scotia, we will stay strong. It's going to be hard. The next few months, years are going to be so difficult for some, but no, there is help for you out there. We will stick together. All you have to do is reach out. Um, the whole not knowing, I don't even, you know, I, I'm hoping my house is still standing, but it's just that whole uncertainty, you know, how do you rebuild? How do you, what do you do next? There's so many unanswered questions, but no, you're not alone. You're not alone. Reach out. There is help for everyone. Caroline Parker, thank you so much for making the time to join us, especially considering the fact that you everything is so in flux with life right now, uh, that you continue to work, that you continue to share this story, regardless uh, of that fact. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Tammy. No problem. We hope that you get home to your home soon. Thank you. Thank you.